Hey there. Have you ever been online talking to someone and they said something really weird? Did you ever consider that you might be talking to a computer and not to an actual person? How could you tell? Well, today we're going to talk about a way to measure computer intelligence, and this is called the Turing test. Now let's get an introduction so that we're all on the same page. So first off, Alan Turing was a computer scientist who researched the behavior of artificial intelligence or AI. And he developed what we call the Turing test to see how intelligent computers actually were, if a computer can behave like a human. So think about a person in a room, and there is a person in another room, and then in a third room, there is a computer. And both are talking to the person in that middle room. Now, if the computer can convince the person in that middle room that they are a human, then again, they pass that Turing test. So right now we have uh, artificial intelligence called large language models that are really good at mimicking people. And they're really fun to play with. I'm sure you've experimented a little bit with chat GPT, but they can also contribute to scams, uh, cheating, and generating fake information. So the question is, can people figure out if they're talking to a computer? So our researchers did a really cool experiment. So let's talk a little bit about what they actually did in their methods. So our researchers took 4,600 people and they showed them 16 different bios, biographies. Um, half of these were actually written by artificial intelligence and half were written by real people. And somewhere when they were looking at the bios, they asked the people why they made the decisions that they did about whether they thought the bio was made by a real person or by artificial intelligence. And a separate group of people looked at the traits of the bios. So these are things like whether the bios were sensical, whether they were repetitive, what their grammar was like, and a variety of other things. And so the question was, these 4,600 people, could they tell the difference between the bios written by real people versus the artificial intelligence ones? So our results here, what they found. So first off, when people were looking at these bios, 54% of the time, the uh, test subjects thought they were written by real people. So that shows a bias in uh, figuring out who actually wrote the things. If there weren't any bias, it would be 50-50 because half of the bios were written by real people and half were written by artificial intelligence. Also, when they looked at a bio that was written by artificial intelligence, they couldn't Oops, that's not how you spell couldn't. They couldn't identify that it was written by an AI. But they did have some rules of thumb that they made those decisions on, based on, uh, even if they ended up being wrong. So let's look at what their data actually shows. Okay, so 
The X's are going to be the guesses that people made, and the O's are going to be the actual traits of the bios that that group of people looked at before. So things like nonsense, repetition, gram bad grammar, unusual words, and contractions like don't and won't. So um, our test subjects, they thought that bios that had more nonsense in them were more likely generated by AI. The actual data supports that. Um, same thing for repetitive uh, or repetition within the bios. For bad grammar, people thought that um, the more bad grammar there were, the more likely it was generated by an AI. But the actual data shows that it's more likely that humans have bad grammar in their bios than the AI. Same goes for using unusual words, okay? Um, and then the opposite is true for contractions. People guessed that uh, using contractions in a bio meant that it was written by a human, um, and it was actually more likely that the AI wrote those bios. So looking at all this, what does all this actually mean? Let's get a little discussion going on. First of all, these rules of thumb, they can be good because they're simple and they're fast to make decisions, but they can also be bad because they could give us the wrong answer. And they're also predictable. Now the problem with being predictable is that they can be dangerous because that means that phishing scams, scams trying to get your data, are going to be more believable, which is a problem. So in the big picture, what do we take away from this? Let's get some conclusions. So the first thing is, be careful when you're on the internet. Okay, you never know really who you're talking to. Um, but you can do some things to keep yourself safer. One is check your sources and any kind of author information based on what you're looking at. The other thing is don't share personal information. that will, will help keep you a little bit safer. So think about those things, and I hope you learned some stuff today. Have a good one.